Pingu runs away. <laughs> Every evening in their ice and snow home, Pingu's mama and papa like to settle down with Pingu to a penguin family's favorite supper. But Pingu gets bored with his boiled fish, his boiled potatoes, and his boiled green vegetables. One evening, Papa was thoroughly enjoying his boiled fish. Mama was thoroughly enjoying her favorite treat, boiled beetroot. But Pingu was thoroughly hating his boiled green vegetables. He poked those greens all round his plate. Mama and Papa were chatting about how much they loved their food. Mama tried a little of Papa's fish. Papa tried a little of Mama's beetroot. Then Mama offered Pingu a little of her beetroot. Beetroot, yeah! Pingu pushed it away. The horrid beetroot flew from Mama's fork and landed splat, all purply red, over her clean white penguin feathers. Mama was shocked. Papa was furious. <gasps> But Pingu took no notice. He ignored Mama when she scolded him. While Mama tried to wipe the purply red mess from her feathers, Pingu started to rock backwards and forwards on his chair. Until he'd rocked so far, he tried to stop himself falling backwards by grabbing the tablecloth. But he fell anyway. And the cloth the cutlery, the plates, and the supper all fell down with him. Papa was more furious than ever. Oh. And even Mama was so cross, she put Pingo over her knee and smacked his feathery bottom. <laughs> Pingu thought his Mama and Papa were being thoroughly unfair. While Mama and Papa cleared up the mess, Pingu trudged miserably out of his ice and snow home. Mama and Papa thought he'd soon stop being upset and cross, but they didn't know just how upset and cross Pingu really was. <laughs> Still miserable, he set off beneath the night sky across the icy Antarctic snow. Back home, Papa had settled down to his knitting. He was making another red woolly hat for Pingu. Mama was reading her daily pengigraph when she noticed it was getting rather late. But Papa told her not to worry. Pingu would soon be home and perhaps he'd have learnt his lesson. But out in the cold and beneath the eerie starlight, Pingu had decided he would never go back home. Even though he was lost amongst great rocks of ice and huge looming boulders of snow. He had to leap for his life as a huge mound of snow tumbled from an icy cliff and scoot away as an even huger mound of snow fell from another cliff. Scurrying about, Pingu came upon a vast pillar of ice which towered above like a gnarled, misshapen skull. Pingu hurried past. He almost ran into another vast pillar of ice. It looked like some grotesque, monstrous hand. Pingu was lost, miserable and frightened. He scuttled through the fearsome landscape until at last he found a tiny cave of ice. There Pingu sat and waited. For he knew not what. Back home, Mama was worried. Where was Pingu? Now Papa agreed that, yes, they really should go out into the night and search for their young penguin. So out they went. Stars glistened bright upon the Antarctic snow as Mama called out. The only reply was silence. Mama told Papa to fetch his tractor sledge. Papa agreed. 
Mama called out again as Papa drove up in his sledge and they set off across the ice and snow. In his tiny cave, Pingu stopped shivering for a moment. He'd heard Mama's voice. He called out. Mama heard his voice. Only moments later, she was hugging Pingu to her soft, warm feathers. Mama called out to Papa and he drove up on the tractor sledge. Mama and Papa wrapped Pingu in warm blankets while Papa told him he must never, ever run away again. And back home they all drove on the tractor sledge. Papa opened the door of the ice and snow house which glowed a deep, warm orange against the white snow all round. <clears throat> Mama sat Pingu on her knee and spooned warm, nourishing soup into his grateful little beak, while Papa piled extra logs onto the stove. Then Mama and Papa lay Pingu between them as they all snuggled down in their big, cosy bed. And soon the penguin family were all fast asleep. Pingu and Pinga stay up. <laughs> With two lively young penguins about the ice and snow house, Pingu's mama finds life very tiring. One evening, Papa was out with his pals at the Ice Cat Working Penguins Club and Mama was worn out. It was time for Pingu and his baby sister Pinga to go to bed. But they were playing so happily together, building towers and bridges out of wooden building bricks, that Mama was only too pleased to let them carry on while she put her feet up with a glass of walrus juice and her daily pengi graph. Once they'd used up all their wooden bricks, Pingu decided it was time to chase Pinga round the toy box. And just as baby sisters so often do, Pinga decided it was time to knock the towers and bridges to pieces. <laughs> She'd ruin their game. Pingu was furious. Just as baby sisters so often do, Pinga blamed Pingu. So Pingu, of course, had to push Pinga onto the floor. Mama's rest was over. Now it really was time for bed. But first, Mama took Pinga for her last bottle of warm milk. Pingu pulled silly faces and told everybody his opinion of young penguin sisters. Before bed, he had to clear up all the wooden bricks and tip them into the toy box. All he had left to play with were two cardboard boxes he'd found on the floor. Naturally, he put one on each foot, and now he'd made a pair of skates. As Pinga sucked on her bottle, she noticed her elder brother skating up and down the icy floor of the living room. So did Mama. This was no time for skating, she said. It was time for Pingu to wash his wings and brush his beak. Pingu skated to the bathroom. But Mama made him take off his skates. Bathrooms are not for playing in. As Pinga happily sucked her milk, Mama was pleased to hear the sounds of beak brushing from the bathroom. Inside the bathroom, Pingu was sitting on the toilet seat reading a comic and rubbing his beak brush up and down on the side of the bath. Pinga soon finished her milk and Mama had settled her down on her little pink penguin potty. When Pingu came from the bathroom and showed Mama his clean wings and the beak paste he'd just squirted all round his mouth, Mama was pleased with him and went to tidy up the bedroom. This was the perfect moment for Pingu to give his baby sister a bit of a surprise. He gave her pink penguin potty a hefty kick and sent it slithering across the floor. Mama stormed from the bedroom and sent Pingu to tidy up the beds himself. 
This was a job he always hated. But it could be made fun. Pingu pulled the cover off his bed, leapt onto it and bounced up and down on the mattress. As soon as Mama cleaned up Pingu with a chick wipe, she stormed into the bedroom. Pinga followed her as Pingu tried to go off in a sulk. No sooner had Mama called him back than Pinga tried to wander off. What a pair! Eventually, the two young penguins were safely tucked up in bed. But as Mama said goodnight to Pingu, Pinga was up again and asking for more milk. Mama trudged off to the kitchen and brought back Pinga's milk. But now Pingu was up asking for something to eat. Mama trudged off to the kitchen and brought him back a nice juicy pilchard, just what he fancied. Now a pilchard is a very oily fish. And by the time Pingu had chomped his way through it, Mama had to wipe great big greasy patches off his clean white feathers. Next, Pingu wanted her teddy. And Tingu wanted the rest of Pingu's milk. And Pingu had dropped her teddy. But Mama didn't come to pick it up. Where was she? Pingu and Pingu went in search. When they reached the living room, they had a terrible shock. <laughs> there on the sofa was Mama, fast asleep. Mama must be tired, thought Pingu and Pinga. Pingu hurried to the bedroom and pushed his bed next to Pinga's. And still Mama slept. This was no good. Mamas can't lie about snoozing when their young penguins are still wide awake. Pingu decided to put a stop to it. <coughs> Mama soon woke up. But the moment she stood up, she was yawning again. Her eyelids drooped and she fell asleep. Pingu tried sliding Mama to the bedroom. But being pushed about on the ice woke her up again. Nobody found me. It was about time they all went to bed. Soon, Mama was tucked up cosily in the middle of the beds Pingu had pushed together, with her two young penguins beside her. <laughs> Noise. It was one of those long, dull days when a young penguin like Pingu just can't think how to enjoy himself. For ages, he'd been sitting around outside his ice and snow house, wondering what to do next. So he was thrilled when his penguin pal, Pengru, came round. At last, someone to play with. In moments, Pingu was drawing squares in the snow for a game of hopscotch, as he and Pengru worked out who should have first go. They agreed it should be Pengru, and he threw a stone onto one of the squares. Then he hopped nimbly back and forth across the snow. Pingu thought he could do even better. He threw his stone and was just hopping after it when his papa's tractor sledge appeared round the side of the house. Papa didn't want noisy young penguins hopping about outside his house and told Pingu and Pengru to clear off as he parked his tractor sledge right across their hopscotch squares. Pingu was furious. So was Pengru. But Papa took no notice. He rubbed out the squares Pingu had drawn so carefully and when Pingu complained... Papa simply told him to watch his beak and not be so rude. He rubbed out the rest of the hopscotch squares and started to paint his own square all around his tractor sledge. Pingu and Pengu thought this was rotten. 
but Papa just went on painting. And when he caught Pingu trying to scrub out his square, Papa really oh, told him off. Oh, no, there's one in front of the office! He stuck two signs into the snow. One had the letter P on it, which meant this new square was now the official parking space for Papa's tractor sledge. The other sign had a big cross over a picture of a young penguin playing in the snow, which meant that young penguins were no longer allowed to play there. Papa explained all this to them. <laughs> Pingu was not pleased. <laughs> Pengu quickly suggested they should look for fun somewhere else. <laughs> so, off they went. <laughs> Pengu showed Pingu a new dance he'd invented. Pingu thought this was the funniest thing he'd seen all day. It was just bad luck that he should be roaring with laughter right under the window of that nosiest and grumpiest of neighbours, Mrs Pengsniff. If there was one thing Mrs Pengsniff hated more than the thousand other things she hated, it was noise. She flung open her window and told Pingu and Pengu just what she thought of their noise. Very noisily. Just then, Pingu and Pengu's great friend Pengwood arrived, and all three told Mrs Pengsniff exactly what they thought of her noise. <laughs> Mrs Pengsniff threatened to tell their parents about their terrible rudeness. So, when Mrs Pengsniff accidentally shut her window on her own wing... Pingu, Pengu and Pengwood thought it was the funniest thing they'd seen all day. Pengwood was carrying a bouncy rubber ball. And of course, penguins absolutely love bouncing bouncy rubber balls. Soon the three young penguins were bouncing the ball from head to head. Until Pengu headed it a bit too hard. The ball flew from the top of his head to the top of Mrs Pengsniff's ice and snow house and there it bounced up and down, up and down until Mrs Pengsniff couldn't stand the noise anymore. She rushed from her front door, caught the rubber ball as it bounced from the roof into her arms and took it inside. As soon as she'd gone, Pengru and Pengwood discussed what to do next. They decided that as Pingu was so good at seeming really polite, he would have to very politely ask Mrs Pengsniff for their ball back. Uh -huh. Up to her front door he went. And when Mrs Pengsniff opened the door, he asked very politely if they might just possibly, if you please, have their ball back. But Mrs Pengsniff simply refused and slammed the door. Pingu rang the bell again. But now Mrs Pengsniff wouldn't even listen and slammed the door again. This was too much for Pingu. He rammed a hard lump of snow onto Mrs Pengsniff's doorbell. So now the bell wouldn't stop ringing. Mrs Pengsniff stormed from her front door, which immediately slammed behind her. Mrs Pengsniff wrenched the snow from her doorbell and tried to open her door. But it had locked. And she was locked outside. This was the funniest thing Pingu, Pengru and Pengwood had seen all day. <laughs> Then Pingu had an idea. He suggested to Mrs Pengsniff that he could climb in through her window and open her door. And when he did climb in and did open her door, Mrs Pengsniff decided that he really was a polite little penguin after all. So she gave him back the bouncy rubber ball. His friends were delighted. Once again, they headed the bouncy ball from one to another until, once again, Pengru headed it a bit too hard. Pingu's papa happened to be taking a stroll past Mrs Pengsniff's house just then, and the ball flew straight onto his head, and then it flew from papa's head straight through Mrs Pengsniff's window. <coughs> and yes, 
That was the funniest thing Pingu, Pengru, and Penguid had seen all day. Grandpa is ill. When Pingu's at home for the day, he loves to get out his paints and paint a picture of the frozen Antarctic landscape. One particular day at home, he'd covered the top bit of his paper in bright blue for the sky, and now he was painting the bottom bit of the paper white for the snow. He'd finished the picture off with a splash of yellow for the sun. He showed Mama the picture, and she liked it. Pingu's baby sister, Pinga, was crawling across the floor to look at his picture when the telephone rang, and Mama went to answer it. On the other end of the line was her papa, Pingu's grandpa. He was not feeling at all well. So Mama said she'd go and see him right away. By now, Pinga had found Pingu's red paint and she put a great splash of red all over the beautiful white snow he'd painted. She'd ruined his picture. But Pingu had no chance to chase his irritating little sister round the room before Mama told him to stop messing about and come to Grandpa's. Pinga followed Mama and Pingu followed Pinga. But when he got to the front door, Pinga had slammed it in his face. She was leaning against it so he couldn't get out of the house. <laughs> right, he'd soon sort out that cheeky penguin chick. Pingu ran up and hurled himself at the door. But Pinga had moved away and Pingu tumbled straight through the doorway, splat into the snow outside. <laughs> Mama, of course, thought he was messing about. She was driving the tractor sledge and Pingu was riding on the back. So Pingu fetched his own sledge and tied it to the tractor sledge. Then off they set for Grandpa's house. <laughs> By now, Pingu was standing on his head showing off to his sister. Mama told him to stop messing about and take Pingu in to see Grandpa. In they all went. Before they could ask Grandpa how he was feeling, he told them. Terrible was how he was feeling. He was wrapped in a blanket and his poor old head was covered in big brown spots. Mama told the children they must be very quiet and not get too close to Grandpa. So they just waved at him. And he waved back. Mama put more wood on the fire and the two young penguins tried to cheer up Grandpa by dancing round and round his armchair. This only made his poor old head hurt even more. So Mama sent them off to be quiet somewhere else. But soon Pingu found a pan of nourishing broth warming on the stove and couldn't resist sniffing and fiddling with it until the lid fell off. <coughs> Mama was fed up with Pingu messing about. But while she was testing the broth, Pingu showed his little sister one of his favourite treasures, Grandpa's wardrobe. <coughs> they tried on all his old-fashioned hats and slid about the icy floor in them until they both skated into his wardrobe. All Grandpa's prized possessions tumbled out. His poor old head was throbbing. Mama sent the two naughty penguins to play outside. Peace at last, and Mama could feed Grandpa some nourishing broth. But now, someone seemed to be knocking at the front door. Outside, Pingu was playing foot snowball. The door was the goal. Pingu was the very small goalkeeper and all Pingu's shots were whizzing past her into the door. Mama rushed out to see what was going on. 
and suddenly one of Pingu's foot snowballs landed splat in her face. The two young penguins thought this was hilarious. <laughs> Mama had had quite enough messing about for one day. She packed them straight off home on Pingu's sledge, which cheered them both up no end. While Mama fed Grandpa some more nourishing broth, at home Pingu had a new plan. He found his brown paint and covered his head in great big brown spots. <laughs> Pingu wanted some spots too, and soon her head was covered in big brown spots. Now for the next part of the plan. Pingu telephoned Grandpa's house, where Mama was putting soothing ointment on Grandpa's head. When the telephone rang, Mama answered it. It was, of course, Pingu calling her to say he and his sister had been taken ill. Poor Mama. She sped straight home on the tractor sledge. And hurried into the bedroom to find Pingu and Pinga covered in big brown spots. She soothed poor Pingu's brow and was surprised to find her wings smeared with brown paint. Pingu giggled <laughs> as Mama tested Pinga's brow. Now both wings were smeared with brown paint and Mama realised what her two young penguins had been up to. But she was so thrilled they weren't really ill, she let Pingu paint her own face with great big brown spots. Pingo was bouncing up and down on one of the beds, and Mama even tried bouncing on the other bed, but she was a bit too heavy. Well, that's Mama Penguins for you. Pingu and Pinga at home. very often that Pingu's mama and papa go out for the evening. But when they do, papa always puts Pingu in charge of the ice and snow house and his baby sister Pinga. And Pingu always promises to be grown up and sensible. One evening, mama and papa were looking forward to a grand symphony concert at the Pengbert Hall. In the bathroom, mama, who loves music, was putting on her makeup, powder and beak stick. Then she put on her best hat and came out to make sure her two little ones were snugly tucked up in their beds. <laughs> then it was off to the concert. Pingu and Pinga sadly waved goodbye. As Papa opened the front door for Mama, Pingu and Pinga were crying. And Mama was sad to leave them. Papa was sure they'd soon be asleep. But as they set off into the night, Mama's thoughts kept returning to her young penguins in their little beds. On those little beds, though Mama wasn't to know it, Pingu and Pingo were bouncing up and down like a pair of black and white yo-yos. Then, once they'd had enough of that, Pingu told his sister to turn on the radio while he put more logs on the wood stove. Pengbert Hall, Mama and Papa arrived as the orchestra were tuning their instruments and they hurried to their seats. By now, Pingu had heated up the stove and was showing his little sister how brilliant he was at making pancakes and especially at tossing them. He could even toss a pancake up high, spin round and round and catch it again on the way down. Pingu was amazed. She was even more amazed next time Pingu tossed the pancake. It flew straight up to the roof and stuck there. Pinga shouted at the pancake to come down again. Soon it did. It flopped splat over Pingu's head and hung off the end of his beak, making it look like the trunk of an elephant. In their seats at the concert, 
Mama and Papa were enjoying their music, happy that Pingu and Pinga would by now be fast asleep. In fact, Pingu was by now showing Pinga how to bounce bouncy rubber balls. Pinga wanted to see what would happen if she bounced the ball at the bookshelf. And of course, the bookshelf fell down. <laughs> at the concert, Papa had closed his eyes to concentrate on the beautiful music. But Mama soon woke him up before anyone noticed. At home, Pingu and Pinga were enjoying their beautiful music too, as Pingu hauled their parents' clothes from the wardrobe. <laughs> now they could dress up as Mama and Papa. Pinga felt gorgeous in Mama's best flowery hat. <laughs> and Pingu felt handsome in Papa's finest top hat. <laughs> <laughs> at the concert, Mama and Papa gazed lovingly at the photo she always carried of Pingu and Pinga. Soon they would be going home. Where Pinga was having a great time in the bathroom. She'd set the taps running and was wallowing up to her neck in Mama's birthday bubble bath. Pingu leapt in to join her. Together they rocked the bath from side to side until it toppled over. At the Pengbert Hall, the concert had finished. Mama and Papa joined in the enormous applause, and at that very moment, Pingu noticed the living room clock. He realised that his parents were due home at any minute. Hurriedly, Pinga mopped up the bathroom while Pingu rushed about straightening the furniture and mending the bookshelf. As Pingu tried to stuff all the clothes back into the wardrobe, just in time, Pinga remembered to turn off the radio. In the crisp, clear moonlight, Mama and Papa were approaching the ice and snow house, where Pingu had just turned their wardrobe onto its back and was jumping up and down trying to squash the clothes back inside. Mama and Papa were at the front door. They opened it just in time to see two innocent little penguins tucked up in their beds. Mama thought her wardrobe looked a little odd. She didn't remember leaving it with trousers bulging from doors and jumpers spilling from shelves. As soon as she touched them, all the clothes tumbled out. <coughs> which, of course, woke Pingu and Pinga up. Mama wanted to know if they'd gone to sleep quickly. <laughs> While Papa wanted to know if they could explain why the wardrobe doors were bulging. <laughs> but of course they couldn't. Once Mama had packed the clothes neatly away... <laughs> She hugged Pingu and Papa hugged Pinga. And the penguin family settled down to sleep, all of them with happy thoughts of a thoroughly enjoyable evening. <laughs>